Anchoring in Siege is often the most misunderstood role on defense and is also considered pretty boring by most people. That's why in today's video, I'll be teaching you what anchoring actually is and why it's incredibly fun and how you can win more games by being an anchor. First off, let's define anchoring. And for this, I'll be using an example of when I was a competitive defensor. I know, strange, but hear me out. During practice, we would often do 3v3 team bouts. The first person from each team was often the worst fencer. The second person from each team was pretty good, but not the best. And the third person was absolutely the best. And this is because the third person was the anchor of the team. Now their job was to get a lot of points, but that wasn't really their job. Their real job was to make up for the shortcomings of fencers one and two. And because they're the best fencer, they could get a lot of points, making up that gap that was potentially caused by the first and second fencer. This is also kind of the same in Siege. The anchor is someone who will make up the shortcomings of the rest of the team. The way to do this is by locking down the site with utility and delaying time. They also help out roamers and make up for the roamer shortcomings by using camps and setting up the site early so the roamer can go off and be in the best position possible early in the game. Instead of setting up the site, the anchor will do that so the roamer can focus on roaming, what they're good at. It's not the most flashy role on defense, but it might just have more impact than even a roamer because of everything you do and how you influence the round. Like I said, setting up site, getting information, denying plant, denying the push, all incredibly important things and super impactful. It's just that most people don't know how to anchor properly and they consider it kind of boring. Now that we know what the anchor is and why it's important, what are some good operators to anchor with? The truth is anyone can anchor, but you want some operators that can deny plant or provide value to the rest of the team. Some great operators that fit these criteria are Smoke, Echo, Maestro, Mira, Valkyrie, Goyo, and the Lord himself, Big Chungus Tachanka. Each of these operators fit one, or in some cases, both the criteria I listed above. So now let's break down some actual gameplay of me anchoring, and I'm gonna explain step-by-step step what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how it's impacting the round as an anchor. It might not look the most fun, may not be the most flashy, but it is certainly the most impactful thing that you can do on defense and it'll win you more rounds. So let's break it down. Yes, my hair is pink. If you wanna know why it's pink, check me out at twitch.tv forward slash vexing. So now let's break it down how I anchored this position with one of my favorite and often honestly most underrated anchors in the game, Legion. As you can see, there's 127 left on the clock. It is a 3v2. My roamers died and also some of my other anchors died. Fenrir chose to fall back to site as he was one of the roamers. He saw, hey, you know, two people died. The Kai got a little bit aggressive and the Mute unfortunately died just to uh, some unfortunate positioning, which we'll talk about in another video on how to position yourself better so that doesn't happen. So I'm gonna go break it down here. It's only around two minutes, so let's get kind of get into it. So first and foremost, the position I'm playing is, is, is right here behind throne. This limits where I can get pushed from, and this allows me to stay alive. A crucial part of anchoring is staying alive so you can be in these clutches so you can influence the round. And the reason why I'm playing Legion is Legion is great for slowing down the push. This helps you get map control in a sense where they can't really push into certain things. They have to play around Legion or they're going to have to hit the Legion mines, which is something that you're going to see because it gives me and the rest of my team info, which is why he's actually a really strong anchor because he can deny plant and he can get info when they're pushing site. He's actually a nightmare to play against. I can hear someone split. Team is even great calls. So I threw that Legion there so I can get some extra information. And I know the Ash just destroyed split utility. So I made sure to throw a Legion there to re up. And this is also going to do a few things. It's, I'm just going to have like my presence around the map. I'm, I'm going to be able to anchor harder later into the round because I will have that. I don't have to worry about watching that. I can actually just focus on this doorway here, uh, which is thrown door and some split door because I have that information there and it'll slow down their push. So now they, they know there's a Legion mine there. Are they going to tank it? Are they going to shoot it? Either way, I'm going to get the information so I can actually play off that effectively and win. This is also the strength of anchoring. You have to make up for the shortcomings of your team. I know my roamers died. I know some of my anchors on site died because of their positioning. So I have to make up for their shortcomings by playing this operator, by putting myself and my teammate in the best position possible to win this round later in, in the game. Yeah, hold my dragon. I'm calling my teammate to hold my dragon. That way we are both holding different things. Even though I have a legion mine here, I still actually want to play here just so I can contest this. So he's holding this doorway over here, which is thrown door. I'm holding this. So we have a crossfire set up where we're holding each other's weak points. This is again, another thing that you need to do as an anchor is to make sure that your teammates are also elevated. Again, you're coming up and making up their shortcomings. This guy on my team, Gregor, cannot watch both doors at once. So we're just going to watch each door ourselves. This is me making up the shortcomings for my team. So I hear a legion go off in in um, dragon. So I'm gonna position myself to try to get dragon. I hear split doors, so I'm just gonna call it out to my teammate, and I'm gonna try to position myself in a spot 
where I, I can kind of just like hold it, right? This is, this is honestly should just be a video about positioning. But yeah, I, I know one's in split. And because I have the Legion Mines, I will be able to A, get the audio. B, it'll slow them down. And C, it'll deny plant. If you have a Legion Mine in you, you can't actually plant. You have to take it out first. And that could actually force the win condition where they're trying to plant. But they have to take out the Legion Mine first. Meaning I can kill them when they're trying to plant. Because they're going to be taking out the Legion Mine. I hear someone in my Dragon Door. I go for them to push in. I get two. I'm impacting. Here's another trick that most people don't know. Impacts actually do a lot of damage. So because I know this guy hit my Legion Mine earlier in the round and he took a gunfight with some other of my teammates, he actually might be low enough to impact. And then I kind of push in. I hear the Fenrir activate, so I know he's blind and I can swing and get that kill. But that was a successful anchor, right? I set up my team for success. I tried to, unfortunately, the Fenrir lost his gunfight, which sucks, it happens. But the real power of that round was I was sitting on site. I was denying information. I was having information for my team via Legion Mines. I was denying plant potentially and pushes potentially because once you walk in, you're slowed and you'll get revealed to what operator got hit by the Legion Mine. As you saw when the Ash walked into the door, she got hit by the Legion Mine, so she was slowed and I was able to pick up those two kills. Uh, thankfully, whoever was right here um, in sight didn't, didn't turn around and kill me. And then because my teammate, who's also anchoring with Fenrir later in the round, had a Fenrir set up on split, I knew the Fenrir went off. So I was able to swing him, no problem. So that's the good part of having an anchor or multiple anchors on your team. You can make up for each other's shortcomings. I was making it by slowing down the push and denying plant potentially, as well as getting information. And so was the Fenrir, doing a different way of denying the push and getting information. When the Fenrir mind goes off, you get information because it makes an audio cue, but it also denies the push because you get nearsighted and you can't push when you're blind. And you also can't kill what you can't see. So thankfully, between me and the Fenrir, we were able to lock it down and win the 2v3 clutch. Uh, really appreciative of the Fenrir playing there. And I thought that would be a good example. I'm going to show you one more example of a different type of anchoring where it talks about what I was talking about earlier in, in the voiceover, where I was saying, hey, here's how you anchor. You have to get information for your team. So this was me anchoring on the site in the more traditional sense where I'm sitting on the team, making up for everyone's shortcomings and clutching it out. But the other type of anchoring is where you help your team and you elevate them up. So I'm going to show that it's a lot less flashy of a clip, but it does show the importance of having an information anchor on your team and how to properly anchor and relaying information to your team as an anchor, therefore making up the shortcomings of a Roman who doesn't have all the information because they're always in the trenches they're always in the mix of combat so giving them information is absolutely super important as an anchor and honestly is just the unsung hero of most defense rounds so let me show you that now okay so here we are this is an information anchor on clubhouse we are in gym master bedroom i am playing echo and i'm getting info for my teams and also info for myself information is a huge part if not the most important part of siege and as an information anchor you can get information to do, like to reliably kind of just talk to your team about what's going on uh have cam set up and in Echo's case, not only can he get information, which is number one, but number two, he can actually deny plant with his Echo Drone. The Sonic Blast from the Echo Drone denies plant for most people, and it's actually pretty strong. He's this is he's honestly super underrated. You, you guys should play him video coming about that soon. So I'm just kind of getting information from my team. A really underrated part of Echo's kit is I can I can just do this right here. I can tell Yana's there. I know she's Yana droning. And I'm just gonna put this here to get information. I want to deny information. I'm going to go take a more aggressive spot. And even though I'm playing off-site in a, a non-traditional anchor room, I'm still anchoring because I have the information. With a bunch of shots there, you know, as we do. But I'm still anchoring on site. Yes, I'm a room over, but I'm still actually holding down site with my drones. This is just another form of anchoring. It's a 3v1. And we're going to be able to close this out pretty handedly. That's just another example of anchoring, but with an information focus instead. Most people don't want to do that because it, it is boring. It's not a fun gameplay loop. I was on my cams most of that round. I this, this is a three minute clip and I only showed you like the first like or the last 30 seconds of the clip because the first two minutes is just me on drones. But I want to show you how impactful drones are. I was able to relay call outs to my teammates so that they can be in the best position to win the round. So that's basically it. That's how you anchor in Rainbow Six Siege. That's why it's important. And it's also really kind of fun because you put your team in the best position to win. If you want to win more games in Rainbow Six Siege, consider anchoring because it's just really impactful and super influential. You change the round by setting up site properly, allowing your roamers to go off anywhere in Rome. And then in other ways, you are denying pushes. You are denying plants. You're getting information to elevate your roamers and help their roaming game. So they may be able to get picks and slow down the enemy attack. It's very influential. It's very fun if you know how to play it properly. And a lot of anchors, they just kind of sit there on site and do nothing for two and a half minutes and then die because they don't know what's going on.
So play anchors, learn how to properly play anchors and you will win more games and especially use the operators I recommended because they are the best anchors in the game, hands down. That being said, guys, it's been Vexing. If you've enjoyed this video, check this video out on screen over, over there and then I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.